Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and we're live on a Friday lunchtime, which means it's time for us to talk about coping with feelings. And the feelings that I want to talk about today are the feelings of adaptability, your ability to be able to adapt to what's really going on as opposed to what you wish was going on. And that is definitely my life at the moment. Um, a very warm welcome to you all. And for those of you who don't know, Dear Mama Sal, it's not just me. It's a group of us who get together three times a week and we hold each other's hands as we go through life. You know, life can be pretty difficult for some of us at some times and it can be a lot of fun at other times. And there's nothing like having a group of people you can share it all with just so that you know you're not alone. And th for that, I'd like to thank all of you, but in particular, Jody, our admin, um, and also uh, Jeannie, who acts as our standby uh, admin in case Jody uh, is not available. So really, thank you both very much indeed. And it is said that adaptability is being able to adjust to any situation at any given time. And so I would ask you to ask of yourself, how adaptable do you feel you are on a scale of, say, one to five with <sighs> one being, I am really set in my ways, to five being, boy, you know, let the wind change and I'll change with it. Um, the reason I say that is because I'm not suggesting that you should be a weak person that doesn't have their values and morals and all the rest of it, where, you know, as the wind changes, you change with that. Not that sort of adaptability, no. Um, that's a whole different ball of wax. What I'm talking about is the ability to be able to change with what is happening in the real world at the moment. And I think as we go through the next few years, we're going to see a lot of big changes. And, you know, I'm hoping that we will be able to change with them as far as possible. Um, don't forget, by the way, if you're new, please give us a thumbs up or uh, leave us a comment. Or even if you're not new. Uh, if there's anything in this broadcast that has helped you or will help you as you know, we go along, remember to give it a thumbs up so people know it's worth listening to. So before we do our main topic, I just wanted to do our usual birthdays and important days. Um, yes, Jeannie's saying here, I have been more adaptable since my husband died. Um, I have to be in order to go forward financially and emotionally. Yes, Jeannie, absolutely. Um, Jody's saying, I'm probably about a three, but it takes me a lot of time to adjust to change. Yes, but, you know, when you think about it, Jody, um, you've had an awful lot of change over the last 10 years, all right? Um, you've gone from being a healthy person, you know, with a job and everything else going on to being a cancer survivor to being uh, somebody with lymphedema, to you know, you name it. It went on and on and on, and it's still going on, and you're still in there adjusting. So give yourself, uh, if you wouldn't mind, fair credit for that. And it is said that adaptability is the simple secret of survival. In other words, if you do want to survive, it's a really good idea to be adaptable. I wonder who that is. It's a wrong time to be calling me. All right. So uh, what I wanted to let you know is that if you stand on your tippy toes, and if you're not capable of standing on your tippy toes right now, you know, just lift your body up a bit and peek over the horizon. And the reason for that is spring is just over there. It's coming, really. I know it's bitterly cold if you're living in the northern hemisphere. But the truth is, understand that spring is on the way. Of course, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you probably want to crouch down a bit because that's fall over the horizon followed by winter. Yeah, Kimmy's saying it's so cold. We're bitterly cold here as well, Kimmy, and we're, we're going to have very heavy snow tomorrow again. <laughs> I was watching some uh, video of, you know, we don't do snow well in my part of the world. I live in southern British Columbia. And, you know, I was watching the what can only be called the Dodgem cars uh, coming down a hill in Vancouver. And, um, you know, it was literally one car 
uh, ended up skidding to the side of the road, and the next car came down and skidded into the back of the first one, and then, you know, and then it all ended up, and at the end there was a minibus that came down and just concertinaed everybody. Luckily, it looked like everybody got out okay, but it was funny to watch. Right, so um, would it be true to say that everything changes? Everything changes once we learn to change. All right, and I, I want you to think about that because it is a gift we are given if we choose to learn from it, which is things are never going to stay the same, never. And boy, have I learned that one big time. Uh, in, in the last couple of months, sorry, uh, it, things just are not going to stay the same for me, and they keep changing. And for those of you who don't know, I ended up with, back in August, I ended up with a mammogram, a second mammogram, I ended up with an open wound biopsy, and then a mastectomy, and now I'm on some, you know, uh, hormone, actually it's an estrogen-killing drug uh, that is busy trying to get to take hold in my body, but my body's trying to shut it down because it doesn't like it. It's, you know, it's like talk about change. As far as I know, there aren't any birthdays this week that I'm aware of. So if we've missed your birthday, please, your regular viewer, uh, please let me know so we can add it to our um, birthday list. So in terms of feeling more adaptable, I do want to just give um, Jody another sort of round of applause here. Because not only is she going through everything that she's going through medically, uh, and she's busy trying to apply so that she can get um, other things available to her in, in the situation that she's in. But on top of all of that this week, she had half the power in her apartment go out. Now, I don't mean that she had a power failure. I mean, somewhere there was a short and it took out half the um, you know, if you've got um, a power socket and it's got two of them, the, the one will be on one circuit and the other one is on another circuit. I don't know if you know that. And she had one full circuit go down. But what it did was it took out certain things in her house. Now, luckily, she has learned the skill of being grateful. And she kept saying to me, boy, was she grateful that the fridge and and you know, things like that were still on the right circuits. So, uh, but Jody, what then? Oh, and then, and then <laughs> the electrician came in to fix it because he thought he could fix it in a heartbeat, didn't he? But that required that he go to every socket uh, in, the, in the apartment. And that meant that they had to move an awful lot of stuff. Now, you know, as well as I do, all right, anybody moving stuff in your place, how many of you are going, it's about the dust bunnies that might be there? <laughs> and by the way, I wanted to say, so hold on. So. Um, the reason I had to go away is because I don't know if any of you have seen this thing, all right? You see how narrow it is? It is the greatest way in the world. And um, the greatest thing for going underneath, you see where my, my oven is there? It's the greatest thing for sliding underneath there or under my fridge or behind a bookcase. So to get rid of the dust bunnies. And, you know, it just like, it cost me next to nothing. Um, but it was just like, boy, and it was so useful to me that, um, uh, I ended up giving one to Yvonne for Christmas. And she's saying the same thing. She said, how did I live without this thing, right? So when you think about it, Jodie is being forced to adapt whether she wants to or not, right? And the guy that you know was checking all the uh, plugs and everything, he ended up saying he couldn't fix them all. He hadn't found them. He needs now to bring in another gadget um, so that they can find out where this wire is that obviously uh, caused the problem. So, you know, patience, you know, whether it's not that Jody wanted patience this week, but she was forced to do so. Let me just catch up on a couple of comments here before they get away from me. Um, Kimmy's saying, 
Yeah, but um, first of all, Jeannie's saying they're expecting another big storm. Uh, when? In a few days. We're expecting a big storm tomorrow, Jeannie, just so you know. Uh, Kimmy, who is in Wyoming, said that uh, she's already being pounded by snow. Uh, she got a break today, though. So she was saying, you know, her life's been all about sh shoveling snow. She said, I couldn't open my back door. The door was frozen, and I had to take the handle off. Uh, and when I got the door open, four feet of snow. Can you imagine that? And I complain about a couple of inches. Um, all right, so Jeannie's saying, I believe that we ought to have some rules of conduct, even though change is normal. I am very opposed to changing language to please the woke person. Changing, hang on a second. Changing words in nursery rhymes, all right? Um, or in general children's books. And she's saying totally wrong. Well, yes, uh, but then uh, I have to say that I can remember when they, when I was in England, or after I left England, when I heard that they were banning parts of the Noddy books. Now, I don't know whether Noddy ever made it to this side of the ocean, but I can remember Noddy was like Noddy, Nod, Noddy and Mr. Plod the policeman were, you know, just like. Winnie the Pooh, you know what I mean? It was just like standard thing that you read as a child. And when I heard, and I was probably in my 20s when that happened, um, that they were banning Noddy from libraries. I'm going, what? But you know, it is different, Jeannie. And I understand that, that you feel very strongly about it and that it's wrong. However, um just because it was normal for us you know i i just want to Jeannie, don't run with this because i need to give you a really bad example to sort of balance it out a bit but you know how many decades ago was it quite all right for a husband to take a stick to his wife as long as it wasn't bigger than his thumb which is where the rule of thumb expression came from it was okay for him to beat his wife with a stick as long as it wasn't bigger than his thumb in terms of its circumference, right? So you're going, and that was normal. So, you know, these things do change. These things change big time. And I can remember, look at all the changes we've had for those of us who are in my generation, all right? How hard we fought for women's rights and how hard we fought for all those changes and how how um, we were victimized and laughed at and you know, burning of the bra type stuff went on. You know, it was all these things that I remember going on. But, you know, we stood firm and I'm glad we did because we managed to change a lot of things. So, um, Jeannie, I'm not saying I disagree with you. What I'm saying is we have to be aware that maybe we are now old school in that and that um, there is a lot of lot more protection of, of children's minds, but is it too much? It's a bit like we, you know, in my day, we encourage that, you know, or my parents and, and that generation encourage their kids to go out and play in the dirt and eat it and do all sorts of things because it helped our immune systems. Yeah. And we were out all day long, right? I mean, I can remember that I only went home to eat. I don't know. Um, you know, it's, well, you know, I say eat dirt, but you know what I mean, Jody. When you're a kid, if you end up, you know, full of mud pies and everything else, you do end up eating dirt to some degree. I'm certain it's good for the digestion somewhere. So I look at it and go, you know, life has really changed for me anyway. And I'm certain for some of you. So I look at Jody's issue, and Jody, here you are. It must be nearly a week later now, and you still don't have the problem fixed. 
Um, but you have adjusted and adapted to life with only half the sockets going. Can I ask you what is interesting about that? Is it what you do use on the sockets that you have? Um, yeah, as you're saying, it's not even close to being fixed. No. And, you know, you can stamp your foot and get angry and do all sorts of things, but it's, you know, it's still not close to being fixed and won't be now until, you know, at least early next week. So what I did was I did a little bit of research and I, I looked about uh, at something that uh, Robert Half said, and, and he was saying how to improve your adaptability skills, all right, for those of you who would like to improve it. Jodie's saying she's so thankful that the outlet for her recliner works. Yep. So here we go. If you're feeling a little bit stuck, you know, in, in, in a place and not quite as adaptable as you may need to be at the moment, number one, learn from other people. All right. Ask other people, how do they adapt? Right. How do they stay strong on certain things and then adapt on others? And where 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 is the balance on that? Where do you draw the line? Because I think for everybody, like Jeannie's point, Right. She she is very solid that she doesn't think you should change the words of an author. And that would be true. But then how many songs, you know, were not allowed to be published uh, until they changed the words? And was that OK with you or is it only in books? Think about that, Jeannie. Let, let me have the answer. Um, Jody's saying the electrician was able to restore the TV outlet. Right? That's, that's a very important one. Uh, I felt like such a luxury to have TV again. Four days without it felt like a lifetime. Yes, but aren't we lucky that we've got laptops and that we can still see the news or we can still watch movies or do all those things that you know, 30 years ago we couldn't do? So the number one thing is learn from others. Learn, you know, find people that you find are adaptable and ask them how do they do it, right? The next thing is to find the silver lining, right? Wherever you can. And as Jody's saying, you know, I remember when it happened, she said, but thank goodness the fridge is still working. All right. So, I mean, there's certain things that, you know, you're going, if I've got to lose half the appliances in my house, you know, let the freezer still work. <laughs> rather, rather important, right? Or make a plan that it does. Um. The other thing is, he said that it's really important if you want to be adaptable, that you learn and are willing to make mistakes. Because what will happen is you need to go from point A to point B. All right. You, this is where you're stuck at the moment, but you need to be flexible enough to be able to exist over here. Now, you're going to make a lot of mistakes on the way to there. But eventually, once you get there, you will be in a more comfortable place. And, you know, I just want you to think how many things you have adapted to, all right, and give yourself credit. And that's another thing I would recommend. Go back in your life and think about the things that you had to adapt to. Jody, you know, life, I mean, you know, think of all these illnesses you've had, and each time you've adapted to them. And I know you beat up on yourself because you're not perfect, but boy, I think it's incredible what you've done. Jeannie's saying, remember I asked the question about songs versus books. She said, an author's imagination is important to me. I have edited a book. Even if I do not agree with the writer, I think he or she has the ability to write with one's own words, untwisted by another party. But then what about censorship in songs, Jeannie? That's my question. Isn't that an author of a song? All right, having their words changed. Do you agree that that should be equally, um, you know, you shouldn't be able to touch it? And if so, how many incredibly um, inappropriate words would be in our songs today? So, you know, it's, it's like if, if you, you can't have it on one side and not the other. Uh, what about movies? Do you agree with censorship in movies? that certain things should be rated G and other things rated X or triple X. So would you rather than um, change the words in books, have the books available, but they have to have a rating? 
I'm, I'm trying to find where the where the uh, the win-win is here. Do you think we should have a rating for books the same as we do for movies? Yes, some are for general audiences, but I wonder how few would survive that. All right, uh, Jeannie's saying censorship in music and movies. Ratings sound good, but then why not rate books as well? You know, I get your point that we shouldn't change the author's wording, but if that is true, then it would need to have a censorship rating on it. And who gets to decide? I think that is the issue for me. Who is deciding this? Is it the the population? You know, has it gone out to a, a you know a national debate and 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 voting, or is it one group of people that have decided this? All right, and that is to me. Um, yeah, exactly. I wondered whether that would be the win-win, Jeannie. Jeannie is saying that rate books if like that, but leave the words alone, yep. And, you know, J Jody is saying a good point. Who has the authority to decide? I think we the people, I mean, I'm in Canada, but, you know, if I can quote your, you guys, you know, we the people have the right to decide whether we think books should be messed with. I like your point, Jeannie. You know, it's like it's the author's original work. Imagine if we change the, uh, wait a minute, though, let's think about this. How many times have we changed the words in the Bible? Mm, that comes up for me, all right? As opposed to the King James's um, version. Well, that was the King James's version. What about, you know, how many times has the wording of the Bible changed? Uh, I've got an incredible Bible, which is in a box somewhere that I haven't unpacked yet. But it, it's, a, it's a really good, you know, a modern day Bible. It, you know, it's a... a I can't remember what it's called. It's I know it's huge. It's like this big. But it, it's taken the King James Bible and then put it into modern day language. Yeah, I agree with you, Jeannie. Jeannie is saying, we the people does not mean one section of the people who talk the loudest. Absolutely, I agree with you. I think it should be on your national voting, you know, when you go to... To, to vote, that you should get that choice. Do you think this is right? Do you want to do it? And do you think that it needs to be per district? In other words, do you think that Jody and all the people in New Hampshire should have their vote for their school system or, or their library system, and you should be able to have yours in Maine, and it could be totally different? Because it would reflect the values of your area. What do you what do you both think about that? So you know, to me, it's like, and if you feel very strongly about it, then talk about it. All right, ha have discussion. Write to the the local newspaper about it. Um, you know, ha let your voice be heard, because I think it is important, especially as you go into the you know next couple of years of going into um, another election. And I'm thinking uh, that, you know, that the person who's doing all of this or to a large degree you know, is up for election to be president. Can you imagine what could happen? Jeannie's saying, and parents ought to be allowed to be involved in school curriculum. Really? You don't think that that should be a, a national body? Well, okay, Jeannie, let me seek first to understand. Give me your why. Why do you think parents should be involved? Because I can think of an awful lot of parents I wouldn't want involved in the school curriculum. Ah, white supremacists being amongst them. Okay, so let me have your why, and then, you know, before I react too strongly on that one. Um, all right, for those of you who have followed my story, I've just finished my first week of being on an estrogen-depleting drug. In other words, I've got a drug in my body that is busy killing off my estrogen to a very large extent. 
And although the side effects have been minimal, um, it has quite honestly changed my life already. And this is before all the other side effects start to build, which I believe they will. My hair will thin, you know, my bones will get weaker, um, all sorts of things will happen. The upside or, of it is if I don't take it, then I'm more likely to get a recurrence of cancer. So obviously, um, for me, the choice was let me take it. Um, so Jeannie's saying here, she's saying right now, parents who disagree with the new teaching methods are called prejudiced. Well, they always will be, all right? Whichever side you're on, you're going to be called prejudiced. It's a bit like red states, blue states, right? Um, so yes, I understand, and you're correct on that. And I can remember, Jeannie, and I've talked about this before. I can remember way back when. Jody, could you let me know when Texas Instruments brought out the calculator? What year was it? Thank you. Um, the reason I asked that question is because I, again, can remember when they talked about allowing children to take a calculator to school to do math with. There was such an uproar in my generation about that. In fact, my parents' generation. That was going to totally destroy uh, young people's ability to do math. Mind you, how many of you can remember? 1967. Ah, I'm that old. All right. I can, I can remember it really well. It was a year before I moved to Africa. I moved to Africa in 68. So, um, you know, I can remember an absolute uproar. And then, if you think about it, how many of you remember that when we got computers that could show movies, it was definitely going to be the death of all movies, um, theaters? <laughs> Can you remember that one? Oh, no, we can't have that. You know, the whole of the movie theater industry will go under. Well, no, they adapted. They just made the popcorn better, the seats better, the experience better. So you'd still, you know, the 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 3D sound, whatever. The, I mean, you know, Dolby sound and the and and the huge wide wide screens that you know they did a lot of things to make it really nice to still go to the movies and kept their industry going. So there's no doubt in my mind that my body is more tired than it was couple of weeks ago and I'm having intermittent sleep problems which are also another one of the side effects apparently uh, I've noticed that my reaction time to certain things is slower and this is after two weeks you know so as this thing builds who knows what's going to happen quite honestly between us I feel about 10 years older than I did a couple of weeks ago <laughs> However, remember what it said about that, you know, the way that you deal with this is that you, um, <laughs> that you are, you know, talk to people. And so one of the things I really have to say is that uh, I am so glad that I, joined a support group of people who all have the same issue of the same sort of cancer that I have or have had and um, are on the same sort of drugs. And so, you know, their their information to me is very relevant. <laughs> yeah, Jody is saying they've now got power recliners in theatres. They serve alcohol and appetizers. Boy, things have changed. Absolutely, Jody. And Jeannie is saying, for example, I think books promoting masturbation. And I wonder if I meant to say that on, mm, take that back. Okay, you, you know what she's talking about. Um, you know, she doesn't think those sort of books are pro appropriate for school or for young kids. Yeah, at what age do you think you should be allowed to read about those things? You know, at what point does the do you think that you should have the choice to read or not read? Again, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to make sure I understand. 
do you think it should be uh, at the age that you get to vote or should it be at the age that you get to serve your country? I mean, what what is it? Because there are an awful lot of people who say that um, sex, sex education is really important for young teens, you know, so that they know that, about these things. And that they, I, I think, have proven that that sort of education goes a long way to lowering the unwanted pregnancies and all sorts of things. It doesn't do it perfectly, we know. But I'm not 100% sure of that, but, you know, let me know. So can you understand that this shift that I'm feeling in my body uh, could be one of two things. It could be just my body adjusting to the new drug and get, you know, as it builds up. Uh, if any of you have ever been on antidepressants or anything, you will know you feel very different, especially in the short term. And, you know, it's like, you wonder whether you're going to do, um, whether you're going to do, you're going to be able to function. And so to me, this is like, I am aware that I need to just be grateful for what I've got as opposed to what I could have. Um, and that this could be my new normal. You know, I have to be, or, or they encourage me to be on this drug. Uh, for five years. What I'm learning from a lot of the people in the group that I'm in is a lot of people don't hack it for five years, right? The the various side effects are so bad for them that they had to either change drugs or sometimes change drugs twice to get away from the side effects of certain drugs. So I'm learning from others. Remember, that's what they said. You know, one of the ways you get to adapt is to learn from others. And I am amazed how different the experience is for different people. And the same thing is I look at what Jody's been going through and going, boy, uh, I am so glad that we did all that work, uh, you know, about emotional intelligence, because I'm pretty certain that even in her weakened state in terms of health, that Jody is using an awful lot of emotional intelligence to be able to cope with what's going on in her life at the moment. So they said to find the silver lining, all right? If you want to be more adaptable, find the silver lining in things. So I continue to be very grateful that my side effects aren't a whole lot worse. All right, I am very grateful for the fact that I am not up chucking uh, every day or you know, for most of the day. I am really uh, so grateful that you know, there were so many side effects that I could have had that, that other people are talking about that I'm going, so far, so good. But do I know that my hair could thin dramatically? And you know that would really mess with my ego. Uh, do I know that, um, you know, my bones are probably going to hurt a lot more and that's going to affect my quality of life? Right, so Jody is saying uh, your lessons and examples, that, that would be mine, have had major impact on my life. So I am so thankful to you and for your support. Well, you know, Jody, this is the whole point of doing Dear Mama Sal. I think, again, we learn from one another. All right. And to me, this is like the stuff you're going through is teaching me stuff as much as, you know, I will be teaching other people stuff. So, but you know, each time we learn the next bit of the lesson, we move on to another set of lessons. So am I willing to make mistakes? Remember, that's what it said. You have to be willing as you do the change and, be, and adapt. You have to be willing to make mistakes. I know that my focus is a little bit off. And that means that I am making a few more mistakes than normal. <laughs> you know, well, I'll always make mistakes. I, I keep playing at things, right? Um, and I don't know if it's temporary. And it may be my new norm. 
so I better get used to it and get a sense of humor about it and get on with my life as best I can, right? Kimmy is saying that she is thankful for everybody's support too. Yeah, Kimmy, and we're thankful for your honesty. One of the things I love about you is you ask questions that other people don't. And, you know, I, I always value that because, you know, you live in a totally different area than a lot of people. You know, you're not in suburbia or something. You're, you're out in, the, in a rural area in, in Wyoming, you know, which is, you know, you don't have the, the amenities that we do. And it's a bit like whenever we talk to Niasha, I have to remember, you know, she's sitting on a little island in the Caribbean, you know, where the things that we think are normal are not available to her. So, you know, it's very important that we understand life does different things to different people depending on where they live, what their social economic background is, you know, all those sort of things. It's different. But we can help teach each other. So luckily, I think I was fairly adaptable to start with. And that would be, you know, I don't think I'm overinflating my ego here. I think I was fairly adaptable. Um, and so to me, I keep reminding myself, Sal, you've been through changes before and survived. So, you know, just keep making the changes you need to have. So if I know that this could be my new norm and not for the next year, but for the next five years and that over the course of the next five years, things could get, not saying they will, but they could get progressively worse. So how many of you would want to be adaptable about that? I don't have to take this pill. Right? I chose to. Now, I'm certain that some of you are going, why would you choose to take a pill that has all those side effects? Well, the reason is the alternative. They told me that if I took the pill, it would lessen my chance of a reoccurrence of the cancer by 100%. In other words, if there was a 50% chance that I could have a reoccurrence, by taking the pill, um, it would drop it down to 25%. That's a pretty now the interesting thing is my chances of a reoccurrence were very low, they're in single digits. But I moved that needle from single digits down to almost zero by taking the pill. Think about that. Alan Watts said, I have realized that the past and the future are real illusions, that they exist in the present. Sorry, which is what there is and all there is. In other words, you know, if we're not dealing with the present, if we're constant, if I spend my time concentrating on what could happen to me in the next five years, uh, I think I'm going to be pretty miserable. But if I go, boy, aren't I lucky that I haven't got all that going on and live the best life I possibly can uh, with what I've got at the moment, what I'm dealing with at the moment. All right. Then I believe that I will um, live a happier life. All right. So this is like we can we can do this. Now let me tell you how this has affected my day to day life. Um, I was meant to go out on Tuesday. Tuesday is my day for getting in the car and going and doing things. All right. I try to use my car once a week. Um, you know, I'm obviously retired. So I just try and use my car once a week. And I sort of do all the things I need to do out and about on Tuesdays. Now, this Tuesday, I was due to go out and take my bag. I am recycling two fur coats, oh, one fur co jacket, one mink stole, uh, three, uh, one leather jacket, two raincoats. They're all going to a sort of upscale recycling of uh, good clothes. Now, we're going to see whether they take them. And if not, they will probably go to a theater company or um, a movie company. 
uh, because I'm pretty certain whenever they make things like the, you know, in, anything like Downton Abbey or whatever, you know, they want things like fur coats and mink stoles and stuff like that. So any period type, um, you know, movie is going to need them and maybe they will be very grateful for them. And certainly they are still making, um, you know, those movies and will we'll continue to want them. So I was all packed up and ready to go on Tuesday. You know, the, the bag is right there. Let me show you. <laughs> there it is, all packed up, ready to go. Quite heavy, actually. Um, so... But I woke up on Tuesday and the weather was frigid, really cold. And I actually checked in with my friend Yvonne because I knew that she would have gone to work. And she is a very good barometer for me as to whether I should go out or not. And one of the things they warn you about when you have what I have is um, to not put yourself at risk of falling because... Uh, my incidence of having bone fractures are, are going to be vastly increased when, you know, as I carry on this process with this drug. So one of the things they said is wherever possible, try not to go out when it is icy. And what it was, was it was a very icy morning. And I actually just, you know, I didn't want to be overreacting to it. So I checked in with Yvonne and said, how was it? Um, you know, going to work. And she said, horrific, very icy and nasty. Do not go out unless you have to. So I said, okay, got it. Oh, interesting. Hi there, Hawkeye. I think that's Jonas, right? Um, just said, I just had a phone interview for a potential job. Please wish me luck. Of course we do. Big hugs, scary stuff. By the way, breathe. <laughs> I know, I will, you know, when you've done a phone interview like that, um, the only things you need to do is to breathe because, you know, you will have put your body under a lot of stress. Anyway, so I decided not to go out. Now, that required that I adapt. Was it essential that these clothes went to the store Tuesday? No, I decided I'd do it on Wednesday instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the only problem was Wednesday was worse. So now they're here until the weather smartens up a bit. Because now the Arctic flow has come in and we're expecting a major dump of snow uh, coming in. And in fact, we got a week of funny weather. So this is called, and can you understand that what I needed to do was to go remind myself that these clothes had been hanging in my cupboard for over 20 years and had not gone to the store. So another week or another month was not going to make a major difference. Can you get that? I needed to get a sense of humor about it because really it's not a biggie. <laughs> yeah, Jody's saying, you know, they've got a week of snow starting Monday, right? And we've, we've got snow coming starting tomorrow. Um, I love this. It said, if you find a path with no obstacles, your the path probably doesn't lead you anywhere. How many of you know that it is hitting obstacles that somehow or other gives us greater strength, greater flexibility, greater ability to adapt? You know, it's just like, because we're forced to. So you understand my silver lining was, hey, Sal, <laughs> those things that means I, you know, sitting in a cupboard, um, you know, in various places uh, for the last 20 years. You know, it's like, um, or more. Actually, the fur coat I've had since I was 20, which is, you know, 50 years ago, plus 55 years ago. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it's like it's been there a long time. It's not going to be a major. But get balance in this, all right, so that you can. But, you know, I have my mindset on doing it on Tuesday. Do any of you relate to that one? Jody, what happens to you? I know you like to make all your phone calls on Mondays. What happens to you when Monday gets messed up? 
Do you feel out of sorts in the whole week because you've got to find other days to make telephone calls now? Or do you just go, it was just a day, let me just do two calls a day for the rest of the week or something? I, how do you do that? How do you adapt? Remember, ask a lot of questions is what they say because that's how you learn. And how many of you hate it when your routine is messed up? Of course, on Thursday morning I got up and this one you have to sort of imagine. I you know, got out of bed and I stumbled to the coffee maker and I made myself a cup of coffee. Oh, this is so good. Staggered over to the computer in my living room. Sat down. Turned the computer on. And when I went to go and check my emails, which is my routine, uh, it said I didn't have any internet. And I went, really? That's strange. And then I noticed that it was like, well, across the board. So I, I got up and I did what you probably all do, which is I disconnected my router. I disconnected all those sort of wires and things that I need to, and then waited for a little while and put everything back in again. And again, nothing. And it was then I realized when I went back to double check, how many, how many of you understand this one? I went back to go and double check on the computer and I realized it was on battery. In other words, it was not charging. And that was why I didn't have internet. There had been a power cut. But think about that. That power cut happened as I left the coffee maker. How many of you know I gave thanks? Thank you for making sure I could have my warm cup of coffee before the power outage. So <laughs> I was such a happy little camper with my nice cup of coffee. But then you, some of you know that I have a battery thing, a battery pack. Let me just show you a picture of that um, for those of you who haven't seen it. And this battery pack is big enough and strong enough Where are you? There we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And it has one socket in it, you know, one plug socket, and it has room for different USBs as well. Um, so I, you know, immediately got my battery pack and I plugged in, I was about to plug in my computer and my phone to keep them at full charge when I thought, wait a minute. What I never have tried is what if I go from the wall to the battery pack, from the battery pack to a power bar, and then plug, you know, what's plugged into that power bar in my computer, my LED light, that's okay to run off that battery, um, my phone charging, that's okay to run off that battery. And I went, I would then have a complete self-contained little unit going um, just through the power bar. And I thought, I wonder if that will work. Well, you know me, there's only one way to find out, and that is to try it. And it did. And what amazed me was, I mean, the power was only out for a couple of hours, but what amazed me was how little juice it all took up. And then I was talking to Jody about it, and I said, I wonder if I can, <laughs> you know me, I'm always looking for a what if, wonder what would happen if I plugged in my coffee warmer. And I was a little bit hesitant to try that, but after the power came back on, I actually got in touch with the manufacturer of the power bank, uh, the battery thing that I've got, and I said, is it okay for me to do what I did? You know, will it strain the battery? Will it make a, you know, ruin the battery, do anything that I've got now? You know, the battery plugged into the wall and then it goes to everything else. And they said, no, that's fine. And so 
I said, now then, what about my, um, what do you call it? My, my mug warmer. And they said, you know, can you show me a picture of it? Now I know what they were getting at. They probably didn't know that I would know where to look for what they needed, which was what is the wattage of this thing. So I said to them, look, this is the make of it. And the wattage is, I think it was 17 watts that it takes. And they said, absolutely fine. So exciting. Look what I've learned by being a little bit adaptable to things like power outages. Now, you know, I've still got the camping stove ready in case of emergencies. But what I discovered was that, you know, my mug warmer is really quite effective. And if I put um, a mason jar on there with a lid, not necessarily tied down, but a lid on it, it would probably boil water. <laughs> so I'm all the time I'm getting that much better. So now at least I could, if I wanted to, uh, you know, warm up soup or anything else that I wanted to in a mug. Very exciting for me. So learning to be adaptable is so important for us as we go into the next phase. What, what if this whole Ukraine-Russia thing blows up even worse than it's doing at the moment? What if we end up in a world war? Well, we need to be seriously adaptable. All right? And I'm not being a, a, a negative Nelly. What I'm saying is, is there a possibility? Yes, there has been for the last year. And it's getting more critical now that China has decided to support in some ways, have decided to support. But I notice that China is busy saying that it wants everybody to act nicely and, and go back to the bargaining table. Now, what they're doing behind closed doors, it might be a whole different thing. So I look at it and go, I've learned a lot. And I'm certain if I talk to Jody or Erin or anybody else that's been struggling, you know, Kimmy, how much you had to adjust when you had the pacemaker, you know, and that now those sort of things are pretty much your normal now. And so when you look at it, it's like it's only you only required to be, a, um, what do you call it, adaptable until you accept it. Once you've accepted it, it is the new normal. Does that make sense? And once it is the new normal, then you get on with your life. Now, you know that Thursday, well, after the power thing, um, I, I decided I better, I knew the cold weather was really coming in and I went, I better go and fire up the Jeep because my Jeep, like me, is old and it feels the cold a lot more. And so I hadn't run it because normally I would run it on a Tuesday, as you know, I go, I go out on Tuesdays, but I hadn't this week. And now already it was Thursday and I thought, I wonder if it'll even start because, you know, it doesn't like more than a week of not being uh, run because the, for some reason, it, you know, it kills the battery on it. So I went in and I took a really deep breath because what I know is, it might just have enough to turn the engine over, but on the other hand, it might have just gone past that point. Do you understand? It's a real fine line sometimes. And I went to turn on the engine, and I could hear that it was right on the very edge, and I just literally cranked it one more time, and it caught. I was so excited. But you see, I also knew that in the back of the car, I have my charging cables. At the back of my car, I have another you know, battery charger for my car. And it wasn't the end of the world if it didn't start. But I was so grateful that it did. However, it meant that I didn't want to go out where it was very icy and nasty. So what I did was I sat in my carport and played games in my car while I charged up the battery that way. And it was funny because it was bitterly cold in the car, but luckily I, I was well wrapped up. And around about the time that the, it, you know, the heat started to kick in, and then after a while, the car got really quite nice and toasty. And by the time all that happened, it was time for me to go back inside again. Kimmy's asking, what is the name of the battery pack? Uh, the the one for my inside or the one for my car? 
the one inside is called a rock solar. And if you go to uh, Dear Mama Sal, oh no, if you go after the video, if you go down to some of the links and get onto my Amazon page, it will be under. Oh, very good question. Where have I got it under? Hmm. Kimmy, I'll let you know where it is. All right. Because I've got a link to it. It will probably be under garden stuff. You know what I mean? Because it has to do with outside the car. Um, but I will find out and let you know. Jody will remind me, I'm sure. Uh, the reason is because it, the, I can tell you the name of the company that builds the battery. It's called Rock Solar. But what you want to know is which one do I have? All right. And so that's why I'd like you to know which one it is. And by the way, it wasn't it wasn't cheap. I think it was close to 300 Canadian. Something like that. But it would be much less in American. So but it definitely has. It definitely has paid for itself as far as I'm concerned. Enough. Uh, no, you can't you can't do heating with it, Kimmy. All right. You can't plug a heater into it. You can plug a computer, you can plug in your phone, things like that. Um, but you can't plug in a heater. You know, for that, you probably might want to consider, do we get a generator, you know, a proper generator? Uh, my sister did that, Kimmy. Uh, pretty expensive, but when when her power goes out, she now can run heat and stuff through her generator. So The other thing that I had to get really adaptable with this week was the fact that I had planned to go and help a friend who I know is getting their house packed up, ready to move away from my community. And that had been my goal. But, you know, I just knew I didn't have the strength to do it. And I think it was Wednesday, am I right, Jody, somewhere in there where I just literally, I, I had about two hours sleep, insomnia is part of it. Um, and it is really important that, um, you know, I, I hear my body and I, by the time I got up on Wednesday, I was really struggling and I decided I am just going to not try and do anything. And I, I don't know about you, but when I get a day like that, I have to sort of fight myself because there's a tape that plays in my head that says you're being lazy. Now get up and do something. And I just have to say, no, this isn't about being lazy. This has to do with my body is lacking sleep and trying to fight a drug. And funny enough, I talked to both Jody and Yvonne, and they both gave me the same answer, which is <laughs> you, you are absolutely not a definition of a lazy person. And so I, I, I was happy. Anyway, I want to tell you about this friend of mine where I wanted to go and help. And what, what I realized, and this is a really important thing as well, that you don't all or nothing things, right? And so I knew I didn't have the energy to help him pack. So what I did is I got hold of him by email and I said, um, look, I'm, I'm a little bit under the weather because of the drug I'm taking. And I just wanted to check with you before I throw out my cardboard boxes this week. Would you like some? Now, would it help you to have extra cardboard boxes? And the next thing I knew, he was on my doorstep going, yes, please. <laughs> so you understand that part of it is do what you can, even if it's not what you wanted to do. 
And so I didn't have the energy to go and physically help him. But I did, I did still, if I got adaptable, I did still have the ability to help him. It just was in a different way. And he was so grateful. So remember that part of being adaptable is doing the best that you can with what you've got. Um, I had to adapt pretty much this yesterday when I got a delivery from Wish. And almost everything that was in that delivery was broken. And there was no doubt in my mind as I saw the bits that somebody had actually stood you know, and you walked on this package. It, it was in one of those um, uh, plastic bag type packaging things. And it had stuff in it, you know, that that were plastic. And they had obviously somebody had put a foot on it and crushed all of that. There was a electrical thing to some lights that I got from the weight of it had cracked the uh, electrical thing. You know, it was just horrific. So everything that was in that package that was not material was ruined. Oh, there was an extender bar that I wanted for something uh, that was bent. Uh, and so I, it was really unfortunate because I had to get hold of Wish and say, I am really sorry. And I took all the pictures, obviously. Uh, and I said, I'm really sorry. But somebody has walked on this package. And this is what the stuff now looks at. And it was, yeah, it was so sad, very disappointing. But you know something, Jody? It was not vital stuff, all right? I don't get vital stuff from Bush. <laughs> and so I just went, you know, now I get to decide whether I want them back again or not. So does it make sense going back to Wednesday that I woke up not feeling chipper, not feeling like I could conquer the world. Um, can you understand? I woke up feeling like a wet noodle. A little bit past al dente. You know, it was just like, whoa. <laughs> and I want you to remember that beating up on myself for feeling like that doesn't help at all. Doesn't help one little bit. And so what I did was remember one of the things they said about to, to, to in, in terms of adaptability is ask questions. So I went to my mentor. I now have a mentor in that group. And I went to my mentor and I said, do you have some days where you wake up feeling like a wet noodle? Uh, and she said, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then the next day I can wake up full of energy. And I'm going, oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. I haven't felt that yet. And she said, yeah. Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks, but you know, you will find that you know, you have to. But she said, I, I've been on this drug a long time, and some days I do wake up just feeling like a wet noodle. She said, It's a very good description. And you know, I'm pretty sure if you threw me against the wall, I wouldn't stick, you know. <laughs> I just fall right off. Um, so I wanted to ask you all. Uh, to ask yourself, you know, are you fighting against the current or are you going with the flow? And, and I'd like you to ask yourself that a lot. Because I believe that half of our disease, disease, uh, half of our disease is where we are constantly fighting against the current, right? We want life to be the way we want it to be, not the way it is. And the other thing I found out looking for the silver lining, oops, excuse me, just because I couldn't go out on Tuesday didn't mean I couldn't get things done. All right. It's about, OK, you're not going to go out and deliver the clothes, but what are you going to do? And what what I did is I managed to get another box out of my studio. Um, and I'll talk about that in the decluttering. But, you know, it, it was possible to do things just because I couldn't go out. doesn't mean I can't. I can't do anything. Mind you, there's part of me that goes, did I try and do too much? And that's why I was like a wet noodle on Wednesday. Um, so 
what I'm getting now is that I'm going to need to watch that tape in my head about whether I'm lazy or not and know that lazy isn't my sort of default. I, I'm not a lazy person. Uh, I'm not quite as, you know, proactive or whatever as maybe Doug or Jess are at their age, but I am not, you know, I do try and do quite a bit in a day. And so part of my being adaptable is to make sure that I'm telling myself the truth. Jody, uh, I am certain that you've had a miserable uh, week, all right? But knowing you and Lionel, you have found ways to still laugh. And you found ways to cope with this, you know, here you are in this incredible cold and everything else and, and half the, you know, half the house isn't working properly. I cannot imagine what that's like, except I can imagine because, as you know, I'm in a house for the first time where I am going through bitterly cold weather without a furnace. Yeah, it's interesting. Jeannie's saying that when you have faith, you know, you can maintain a sense of peace no matter what happens. Yeah, I I, I am pretty lucky in that, you know, that I do have that faith. But, you know, it's like I also know that I am responsible for what I do. I don't abrogate. I think the word is abrogate that responsibility, all right? It's like um, I know that I need to do some stuff as well. So well, remember that story about Jody and Lionel, you know, when the, the electrician came uh, and they had to move boxes in order for the electrician to get to certain places. How many of you understand that sometimes, and I'm talking about decluttering and, and, and cleaning now, sometimes if, how many of you would be horrified to let somebody move some of the boxes or furniture or whatever because you haven't had a chance to get a little discussion going with the dust bunnies? I realize that um, I'm doing a lot better. There are not many places now in my house where I would be horrified if somebody moved a box or something. And I think it's because I've got this little do that thing that, that I found. But it's like, you know, you, when, when you know it's fairly clean, you don't worry about it. But I can imagine how horrified... I would have been if they had moved a whole lot of boxes in my old house, for example. Um, but I'm a lot better in this house. And so, yeah, Jeannie's saying when she had the snow day, she said I had nothing special to do on a snow day. So I watched television, read my book and did a puzzle. Yeah, it's amazing. Make a day of it. And so what I was thinking about, though, is with Lionel having to move all those boxes, the chances are when he put them back, they probably, he probably cleaned a bit as he did it, and he probably tidied them up a bit as he did it. And so I'm pretty certain there was some decluttering going on just in that reality. And I've noticed that sometimes when you don't want to do certain things, you know, things happen where you're forced to do them. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in that one. Um, I, I heard from Kanzi, you know, in terms of um, her decluttering. Uh, she had a lot of wires in a room, one particular room. And what she did was very clever. She got a, a um, what I think was a horizontal box. And what she did is she put it to be a vertical box and then fed all the cables into it. So she was able to totally declutter that part of her room by taking that box and putting it vertically and, and containing all the leads. Very clever idea, very clever idea. So I was very impressed with it. Um, I did take a lot of things uh, out of a box, as I said. Oh, I wanted to show you. I had a memory that I thought you guys would enjoy. Uh 
Um, my goal when I was unpacking the big box was to unpack it enough, either put things away or throw things away that I could take a big box. I think it was two cube or 1.5 cube and get it into a banker box. All right, the only thing I tried to only save a banker box. In other words, I didn't have to totally put everything away because I don't have room for that at the moment, but I needed to get it down to a banker box from a big box. Does that make sense? But one of the things I unwrapped, and it actually stopped me cold for a second. I don't mind telling you. And that was this. That this is... <laughs> uh, I used to be the associate publisher of, of this magazine. And I guess I turned 40 while I was there. And it reminded me <laughs> of a certain politician who had um, the time thing. Um, but this was made for me by the um, creative department of the magazine, and they gave it to me for my 40th birthday, which, of course, was rather a long time ago. Uh, and as you can see, I had hair. <laughs> I had a lot of hair even then, but it wasn't this color. And I thought you guys would enjoy seeing that. So it's a bit dusty. And here is the next thing. Do I really um, do I really need to keep it? See that that is the difference now. Do I really need to keep it? And and the answer would be why would I keep it? Why would I keep it? And, you know, there's that part of me that goes, but that is a memory. I can't replace that. Uh, but then I go, how much of my house have I got my memories stuck in boxes? So if I'm honestly trying to declutter, <sighs> and do I need to adapt enough? Why did I keep it for so long? Because I, I'm sentimentally attached to it. Good question, yeah, Chris. So, you know, that's why I want to talk to you about it, because I'm certain some of you relate to this. All right? Some of you can understand that this had great sentimental value to me. But could I put it on a wall? Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, or I could get rid of it. You know, that's that's the interesting thing, isn't it? So I've got rather a lot of those memories. And do I really want to put them on walls? I, I, I'm really not sure. I, I've got to give some thought about that. I don't have to make that decision today. But what I wanted you to do is to understand where we need to be adaptable, right? For me to be able to throw this out, do you agree? I'm going to have to adjust my thinking. I'm going to have to adapt my thinking to it's okay, I don't need it anymore. And it's not that I need it, all right? It's about my ego. Does that make sense? It is unique, but who gets to appreciate its uniqueness? All right. And if you say, but Sal, you know how many unique things I own in my life? So the bigger thing is, do I have the ability, the flexibility, the, um, the discipline to adjust and adapt my thinking to be able to start getting rid of these things? That is the question. I could keep the frame because I'm an artist and maybe I've got some art that will fit in there even better. Or I could keep it and, you know, it's just like I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get rid of it pretty soon. So, therefore, what I want to do is have a box, which is I nearly threw it away. <laughs> but how about I say to myself, and I'm not allowed to put it in the shed. So here was another thing that I needed to adapt 
myself too this week. You know, um, I think it was Tuesday when I couldn't go out uh, or I it was recommended that I didn't go out because it was so icy. I decided that I would go out and just clean up some leaves. Now, again, one of those things where you go, did I do too much? Possibly. And that's why I was so useless on Wednesday. But I did go out and I went, I might not be able to go out and do what I wanted to do um, shopping wise and so forth. But maybe I can just clean up some leaves. And as usual, you think, I'll just spend 10 minutes at it. And, you know, I ended up doing nearly an hour. But I felt good about that. I felt good that I had not sat on the couch and felt sorry for myself. I had adapted myself enough to at least do something that gave me achievement. So think about it. Think about how much we need to adapt every day. Think about what's going on in your life. And let me know now, what can you think about in your life right now that you need to be a bit more adaptable about? All right. What is it in your life that you need to be a little more adaptable about? And if you're listening to this on the replay, you know, feel free to leave some comments below so that we can discuss it with you and get back to you. I think it's really important that we understand that our life is full of our need to be adaptable, full of it. And Bruce Lee said this, he said, all fixed set patterns, in other words, habits, right, are incapable of adaptability or pliability. The truth is outside of all fixed patterns. So what he's saying is that, you know, we are also might want to challenge ourselves about our adaptability of our thinking. All right. And we have you know, a pretty solid way of thinking. And how much, you know, in order to be able to adjust our thinking, we have to be very pliable and adaptable to, to change. And that's not easy, especially as you get older. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And I would challenge you to think about your life and go, where am I hanging on to a photograph in my mind of, of something that I learned maybe in my 20s and I'm still hanging on to that thought, you know, where, where life has changed so much since then? Am I making any sense with that? You know, as we get older, we get more, uh, our thoughts more and more ingrained. But, you know, Life changes. The world changes. Now, I know that if you have faith, that you have a set of rules by which you live that don't change. That was the whole thing, right? Um, that you have a set of rules by which you live and that, that are not changeable. And that's great. And I wouldn't detract away from that. So, again... You have to work out which things am I prepared to be more flexible on. And the question I would ask you is this. Is holding on to your belief, whatever that belief is, making you more rigid or more flexible? And I don't mean your belief of faith. Don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the other things. All right, so Kimmy's saying, if you get rid of it, this is the picture here, you check for things that may have been put in the frame with the picture. No, there's nothing else in the frame, but a good point. I won't get rid of, I will open the frame up before I get rid of it, that's for sure. Very good point, Kimmy. 
all right? Because maybe I put 20 bucks behind there or 50 or something. I didn't, but, you know, just in case. <laughs> A very good idea. I love it when you come up with these things. So I believe that it is important for us to look at all aspects of our life. You know, it said, um, it was said that I think the more adaptable we are, the more chance we have of getting through our lives. So think about the people you know that are really happy, <laughs> right? really happy people. In your mind, when you think about it, are they fairly adaptable people? Are they, or are they very set in their ways and very set in what they believe is, you know, needs to happen and that their way is the right way? Or are the really happy people, people who are more flexible? I am so aware as I go through my health challenges that the sort of people who join a support group such as the one I have joined are likely to have a lot of the bad symptoms. Does that make sense? You know, you don't join that sort of a support group because you're feeling well <laughs> uh, necessarily, right? You're more inclined to join it if you're not feeling well because you want ideas of how to feel better. And so what I'm learning to be adaptable about is to read all these negative things and go that the people without symptoms probably aren't part of this group. So don't think just because you're reading all these symptoms and, and realities that you're going to necessarily have them. Can you understand I need to be very flexible about that sort of thinking? Just because they have got the problem, and so many of them have, doesn't mean that you necessarily will. But it's difficult. I must admit, when you're reading them, you want to cry sometimes. But um, hmm. I like this. I've got a quote here that says, sometimes you forget that you're awesome. So this is your reminder. How many of you know that... It, <laughs> So much of what I am going through and will go through is about attitude. If I can ad keep adjusting my attitude, I will cope with this so much better. If I can be adaptable in my attitude, in other words, I may not be feeling very well, but beating up on myself is not going to make me better. So I need to be able to adapt and go, I've got a snow day, even if it's not snowing. I've got a snow day. What shall I do to make myself happy on this snow day? And on Wednesday, I said diddly. <laughs> Apparently, what I need to do is not very much. And so I spent the day not doing a whole lot. But I did tidy up some things, and I did cook something, and I did do all sorts of other little things, but not much. So, again, it's about what attitude are you going to bring to this adaptability? You know, I'm thinking about, Kimmy, did you say something like it was minus 45 degrees? Did I read that correctly? Yeah, we got to 45 below. I mean, that is so horrific to me. I didn't know that, you know, parts of Wyoming got that cold. I really didn't. Um, and so, you know, you can imagine I'm sitting here and we're just dipping in the minus 10 sort of thing. Um, you know, it's just like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's minus 10. I think we're about, hang on, let me see here. Hold on. Yeah, we're about 50. No, can't be right. Hang on, sorry, minus 10 would be about 15 degrees, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're down sort of getting down towards the single digits in Fahrenheit. Um, I, I decided to stop guessing these things and, and keep a little this next to me. You see, I adapted my thinking. I went, I keep having this problem because I have to talk both official languages, you know, American and the rest of the world. And so I've got this little thing here that tells me. So it doesn't go to minus 45. <laughs> I have to tell you, then it goes down to one. 
Fahrenheit. I cannot imagine. I've I've been pretty cold. I must admit, I've been in the you know pretty low because I went up to the Yukon at one point. So there we go, people. I want you to really concentrate on that. Your feeling of, or do you feel adaptable? Or do you feel that you are pretty rigid and stuck in your ways? And my question to you is, think about people you know that are really happy and how flexible are they in their thinking, in the things that they do? Do they complain a lot? or do they just get on with their life as it is? And to me, if you spend your life complaining a lot, it probably means that you need to think about your adaptability to life. Life is never going to go the way you want it to. It's going to go the way that it goes. And our job is to adapt along with it as best we can. So, this is Dear Mama Sal saying, take it easy on yourselves. For those of you who come to the Friday evening broadcast, I'm going to save you a lot of money this evening. Uh, I, I did a bit of research and I did something that I wanted to sort of talk to you about and to show you just how much money you can save if you want to. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, thank you for being here. Remember to stay adaptable and to enjoy what life you have. So many people don't get that choice. We'll see you this evening. And bye-bye for now. Thanks, Jody. And Jeannie.